In this video, we will learn what is auto event variable in Google Tag Manager and why you should use it. Hey, my name is Julius and welcome to Analytics Mania's YouTube channel, where you can learn Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. If you have ever tried to track clicks with Google Tag Manager, you are already familiar with variables such as click ID, click URL, click text. Those variables allow you to access data about that very particular clicked element. But did you know that website elements usually have more data points that you could access with Google Tag Manager? And that's where our event variable becomes very useful. It allows you to access custom data points that are not available with built-in variables within Google Tag Manager. So let's take a closer look. Here I am on a demo website, and here I have an empty Google Tag Manager container. However, there are several things that I have already configured. One of them is a built-in link click trigger that will listen to all the clicks on the page. And also I have configured built-in click variables and GA settings variable. If you have no idea what a GA settings variable is, I have posted a link below this video to a guide about this variable. Let's go back to a demo website and imagine that we are working with a car dealership. For some reason, car dealers love to add PDFs to their websites, and those PDFs usually contain some specifications about the cars, maybe pricing, and something else. So what would happen is that if I clicked, let's say, on this link, I would get a PDF with some specifications about this car, and this link contains a specification about this car, and so on. So what we could do is that we could track these clicks with Google Tag Manager and send events to Google Analytics. So the most standard implementation is to track these clicks and send click URLs as, let's say, event labels to Google Analytics. And we could actually do that. However, in this case, I want to show you the power of our event variable. So let's inspect the first link. Take a look at the link right here. We have some domain, some random numbers and letters, and also some file name. And from this file name, we could not tell what exact model specifications were clicked by a visitor. The same applies, for example, to this model. If I inspected this link, I would see maybe a little different link, but not in all cases, the URL contains the actual car model. And in this case, if I looked at all of these rows in my Google Analytics reports, it would not be easy for me to understand which particular models are more interesting for my visitors. That's why it is a good practice to inspect an element that you want to track. So in this case, that's a link and check maybe that particular element has some additional parameters. And in our case, this link has indeed some additional parameters. Let's take a look. If you do right click and inspect, you will see that this link has two additional parameters that we could use. The first one is called data brand and the other one is called data car model. Instead of sending just click URL, we could also send the brand of the car and the model of the car. And if I saw this kind of data in my reports, my reports would be much easier to read and to understand and to see what kind of models are actually more popular among my visitors. However, there is one problem. If I click on any of these links, you will see that the link click events appear in the preview and debug mode. But if I click any of them and go to variables, nothing related to car brand or car model is visible right here. And that is because those two parameters are custom. The built-in variables in Google Tag Manager cannot access custom parameters. We need to do some customization in our Google Tag Manager container. So if we inspect the links once again, let's say the first link, we will see that we need to somehow access data-brand and data-car model. So as you probably can guess from the title of this video, we are going to do that with the auto event variable in Google Tag Manager. So let's go to Google Tag Manager, variables, and in the user defined variables, click new, then click variable configuration, and then choose auto event variable. This variable allows us to access various data points about the element with which a visitor has interacted. So in this case, if a visitor clicks a link, we can access various parameters of that link. Since we are interested in data brand and data car model, these two data points are called element attributes. So we go to Google Tag Manager and in the variable type, we need to choose element attribute. And then we need to enter the attribute name that we are interested in. And in this case, we should start with data dash brand. Then let's name the variable and let's do the same thing with the data car model. 
click new, then configuration, then element, then auto event variable, then choose element attribute and enter data car model. Of course, you will be applying this tutorial on some other website. That's why you should enter the attribute that you are interested in. But in my case, that is data car model. Then let's name the variable. Let's save it and let's check whether these variables actually work. So what we need to do right now is to enable or refresh the preview mode. You can enable it by clicking the preview mode button right here, then refresh the page. And let's click, for example, the first two links. On the first link click, I go to variables and you will see that my auto event variables returning some values. In this case, that is Lexus and its car model. And if I go to the next link click, it is BMW and X5. Now, the next step is to send these link clicks as events to Google Analytics. So first of all, we need to update our trigger because right now the trigger in my container fires on all link clicks. I can actually show you. If you go right here and click on all link clicks, you will see that this is the trigger. If you have no link click trigger yet, uh, you should go to trigger list, click new, then trigger configuration and create just links trigger. But in my case, I already have one. So what I need to do right now is I need to update this trigger and make it more precise because I'm interested not in all link clicks, but only in those clicks that happen on these links right here. So let's check, for example, the first link click and see what kind of variable can we use in my trigger? Because once again, I need to track only certain clicks. And in this case, the click classes variable could be a good option because all the links on this page that open the PDFs with some information about the file, they use the same click class, which is car brochure. So we could use this in our trigger. So go to Google Tag Manager, open the trigger, or if you haven't created it yet, you should create one. And instead of all link clicks, you should choose some link clicks. And here you should choose click classes let's say equals or contains. And in my case, that value is car brochure. Then I will rename the trigger, save it. And now it's time to create a GA event tag that will send this click as an event to Google Analytics. So let's go to tags, click new, tag configuration, universal analytics, then in the track type field, choose event. And then you should enter event category and event action. Um, event label and event value are optional, but the first two fields are required. So in this case, I guess I could name the category click or something more specific like brochure link click. Then in the action, I could enter the name of the car model and also car brand. And in the event label, I could enter the full URL that was clicked. So right here in the event action, I could enter my previously created auto event variables. So click on this button right here, then choose the data brand variable and then choose data car model. Then I should also enter a space between them. And in the label field, I will choose the click URL variable. Then let's not forget to choose the GA settings variable and finally select the trigger. So whenever a visitor clicks a link that is related to car brochure, then this tag will send an event to Google Analytics. Let's name the tag and save it. Now we should test whether everything is working properly. So click refresh, then I will refresh the page and then let's click the first link, the second link and the third link. First of all, you should see that on all of these link clicks, our tag is fired. Then you should go to GE real-time reports and check whether events were properly delivered to Google Analytics. So you can go to Google Analytics, then real-time and events. And in this case, we see the event category, event action is the car model and car brand. And also if I click on the event category, I will see the full URL that was clicked. So that is how you can use the auto event variable in Google Tag Manager. Basically, if a visitor interacts with a certain element on a page, you could try to access a certain parameter of that element. Of course, not all elements on all websites will have some custom parameters, but you can definitely check that by doing the right click and inspect because maybe a certain element that you are interested in, maybe that element actually contains some useful parameters. And in other cases, let's imagine that you are willing to track certain elements on a page and none of those elements have some data parameters. So what you could do is that you could actually ask a developer 
to add some custom parameters, let's say data, I don't know, dash something. And then you could use that parameter in your Google Tag Manager setup. But one thing that you need to remember in this case is that if you want to access a certain parameter with odd event variable, a visitor must interact with that element. For example, click that element. And that's how you access custom data points of a clicked element with Google Tag Manager. In fact, this variable also works with element visibility and form submission triggers. But remember, this variable works only with those elements with which a user has actually interacted. For example, clicked that element. This and many other useful but underutilized variables are explained in great detail in my intermediate slash advanced Google Tag Manager course. If you want to learn more about that course, check the link below this video. So that's it for this time. If you like this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up because it helps me continue working on this channel. And if you want to get more useful Google Tag Manager or Google Analytics tips, make sure you subscribe to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I will see you in the next video.